My name is Marcus Jones, and I'm a data scientist here at Ocean Protocol. So welcome to Project Manta Ray, decentralized data science powered by Ocean Protocol. This is the first in a series of videos to help you understand the concepts of decentralization and blockchain, and in particular, the Ocean Protocol project. So Ocean Protocol aims to decentralize the access to data sets and incentivize people to open up their, their digital assets for a new AI ecosystem. Digital assets could be data sets first and foremost, but also things like trained weights files um, and even Jupyter notebooks and pipelines and things like that. So um, the series of videos is aimed at particularly data scientists who are interested in these new concepts and in particular how these concepts will impact their workflow and also it's aimed at developers so this could also be data scientists who are more in the development role so people that are just interested in understanding the underlying architecture of ocean protocol as a project so we're, we'll be using the python api which is an interactive way to actually um, send transactions into the blockchain the testnet blockchain the core of Manta Ray is a Jupyter Hub cluster sitting in the cloud, and it's serving as a demonstration and a tutorial and an interactive sandbox. So if you've used Jupyter Lab or IPython Notebook or any of these projects, you know that th these are all very interactive ways to code and also to document code and include things like widgets and images. So we, we're using Jupyter Hub as an interactive tutorial and demonstration for you to understand how to use this API to interact with Ocean Protocol. And again, Ocean Protocol is serving as a substrate or um, a decentralized uh, protocol for you to share digital assets and publish digital assets for AI. So when you log into the Jupyter Hub cluster, you will actually be starting a Jupyter Lab instance, which is pre-configured and pre-installed with our API and all of the other components. And this is a really great way to, to get started very quickly because you don't need to pre-configure, you don't need to configure or install anything. This is already pre-installed for you. Furthermore, you won't need any type of MetaMask integration or you won't need any type of Ether or Ocean tokens to get started. We have some some test accounts already pre-configured for you in this environment. So this is a great way just to, to dive in and get started with this project. So with that said, let's take a look at the, the first notebook, which is just uh, a demonstration of the overall concept. So here we are at datascience.oceanprotocol.com where Manta Ray is hosted. So this is just the landing page. So we have some description, and then this is the, the way to actually start your own personal Jupyter Lab instance running Ocean Protocol. I've already logged in, but for the first time, you will need to use your GitHub ID to log in, and then it will take some time to create your virtual machine, your um, cloud instance running Jupyter Lab. So this is the landing page of Jupyter Lab. So again, if you're familiar with with IPython or Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Lab is just the, the latest iteration on this concept of a, interactive notebooks running Python and other languages. We'll be focused on the Python language, of course. Um, so just a quick overview. On the left hand, we have different um, areas. So this is where we can see some running, running uh, notebooks, some options, uh, descriptions, and tabs. This is the what I usually have open on the left, which is the, the file browser. So we're going to just open up the first notebook. Um, so they all have the IPYNB format. This is the first one. And another thing to note here is that we have a kernel running. And a kernel is simply which, which programming language you're running and which environment you are running. So in this case, we are already pre-configured with a Python 3 environment. So that's fine. And yeah, let's just dive into this first notebook. So um, in a notebook, you can hold down 
shift and and then press enter and you'll start iterating over these cells so a cell you can click and you can see that a cell is a yeah just a box with uh, highlighted at the current cell with this blue uh, rectangle and so this is a way to see inside the cell and just shift enter to pass through them so double click to edit and then shift enter to move through and that of course is more important with the actual code cells so you can see I already have some output underneath the cell and that's because I've run this this notebook before so I'm going to go to this top menu and restart the kernel and clear all outputs so it's going to restart everything and so some other menu items here are also quite interesting for example we can also restart kernel and run all cells so if you want to just execute absolutely everything in the notebook at once this is a great way to do it you can also do things like shut down the kernel and change and interrupt so yeah, this is not really an introduction to Jupyter Lab itself. It's more about Ocean Protocol. So there's a lot of stuff you can you can research on how to use Jupyter Lab. It's an amazing tool for getting up and running with um, yeah experiment experimental code. You wouldn't necessarily want to use this for production, although some people do. Um, I find it a, lo a little bit limiting with the scrolling up and down and the statefulness of the notebook, but that's your preference. It's in any case an amazing way to to demonstrate things and to document things. I personally execute my code in a different editor and then I convert them into Jupyter notebooks. Um, but that's enough about that. Let's just dive into the this first notebook. So we see here the different versions. So this is still a beta. Um, I versioned it 051. I also have these different packages uh, which are pre-installed so I have this is the main APL, API for Ocean Protocol for Python called Squid and this is the Python variant and it has a version and then we also have some utilities the keeper contracts is the the version of the blockchain that is currently deployed into the blockchain so the version of the smart contracts I should say that is currently deployed into the blockchain we also have some microservices which we're connecting to and we'll get into that in a little bit so we're just going to start iterating through the cells. So the first thing we'll do is just import some libraries. And in this notebook, we're not actually going to do anything other than testing if the components are alive. So here we see that um, I've I'm loading a configuration file for the JupyterHub cluster as, uh, as required. And this is the actual path of the configuration file. So I'm just going to iterate quickly over this. Um, Again, the point, of, the point of this notebook is to check the status of these various uh, components that we're running. So we have a component called Aquarius, and Aquarius is the component holding the metadata. So this is the metadata store. Brizo is the access control component. And we see the versions for these two, two components here, and that they've successfully uh, been pinged, essentially. And then we also are connecting to our Ethereum testnet. So this is actually a, a proof of authority. It's not the Ethereum mainnet or anything. It's, it's essentially a, a testnet. And it has a URL. And we also have a component called secret store. And again, this is all stuff that we'll, we'll get into in a later video. So with that done, um, we can then move quickly to the next notebook. And the purpose of this next notebook is to is to check the status of the connection to Ocean Protocol and the version of your API. So we'll just start iterating through. So in this cell, we see something new, and that is we're importing the Python API called Squid. And we see here that um, we're also printing the version. So we're, again, confirming that we're running 051. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just get that path for the configuration file. And now we have everything we need to, to actually instantiate the main API. So we're going to load the configuration file. So it's also inputting, it's also just printing, and you can, of course, see the print statement up here, and you can change that if you'd like. That's the point of the Jupyter Notebook environment. You can interact with this in any way that you would like. Um, so we're connecting to this is the, this is the blockchain that we're running. And we'll actually go ahead and instantiate Ocean. So that's this Ocean class. 
is coming from squid pi. So that's this import up here. So we're going to import that and we're going to instantiate it with a certain configuration. And this configuration is coming from a file. So we're actually loading the, um, I'll just expand it this way. So we're loading the config jupyter.ini file. So you can also take a look at this if you would like. You can experiment with different um, endpoints. So we, ha we also have a commons marketplace endpoint for different aspects of the, of the protocol. And these are the two microservices that we're running. And this is the, this is the um, network that we're connecting to. Actually, it's this one here. It's this is the I opened up the, the wrong one. This is the the Nile network that we're connecting to. So this is the actual test net. So with that done, we can then see that we have a bunch of logging coming from the the ocean API, the squid pie API. So we have here the different smart contracts and their addresses. So these are all the smart contracts that are running in the testnet. So this is a great way for you to verify that you're actually connecting to the correct smart contract. So there could be multiple versions of something deployed. And this is a, a nice way to check that. And indeed, we're going to even, even more strictly, we're going to confirm that our local ABI files are correct and they match the versions. So in, in the blockchain world, um, especially in the Ethereum ecosystem, we have a local representation of the smart contracts, which contain, let's say, a fingerprint or um, the description of the smart contract and how people can interact with that smart contract. And that's contained in an ABI file. And these are located simply in this folder. And we can, of course, inspect some of these. So obviously, there's a lot going on with, with, these, with these JSON files. Um, we can actually expand and, and take a look at some of these uh, properties. Um, but essentially, the, the idea is that the, the methods and the classes of the smart contract are represented also locally in your client. So again, this is the nice thing about Manta Ray is that all of this is pre-configured. Usually when you install Squid Pi, the Python API, you will get you will also get these artifacts installed locally as well. So that's also a Python package sitting in the Python repository, PyPy, and that will be fetched automatically. So in the end, you don't actually need to, to worry about these ABI files. Um, you only need to worry about them, let's say, when something goes wrong. And that's the purpose of this, is to make sure that your versions are matching up. So let's move to the next cell. So we have in this in, in Manta Ray a series of test accounts prepared for you. So in this case, we actually have 58 accounts. Um, and from these, we've been pre-allocated pre some of them just to play around with. And that's what we'll actually explore in the next notebook. And in the last cell, I'm also just um, inviting you to explore the, the configuration object. So again, we have this INI file. So what happens behind the scenes is that this INI configuration file is loaded into memory as a Python dictionary. You could also conceive of creating a dictionary just in straight Python code. And that's what's doing. That's what's going on here. And you can then explore some of these different uh, options and configuration options. So as a developer, this might be interesting to you to change one of these endpoints to connect to a production net, a test net, or, mar or a certain marketplace. So hopefully that's, um, that's, a, that's clear so that Again, the purpose of this video is just to give you a quick overview of, of Jupyter Lab, and furthermore, to, to check the status of the components. So again, this first notebook is checking the status of the testnet components, if they are alive or not. And then this next notebook that we just went through is to check that your version of the API is correct, and it can indeed connect with this with the smart contracts in the blockchain and that your abi files are correct so that's with everything um set we're now ready to sail into the next notebook uh to discuss users and tokens using this uh, testnet see you there